If you have your Bible today, I'd like to direct your attention to the book of John, chapter number 5. John chapter 5, and I'm going to start reading with verse number 1. We'll read down for just a few verses here. Through verse number 4. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. We thank God for his word today. I want to talk to you for a few minutes here before uh, we go home. I know you got a lot going today, but we want to give God a chance to do what he wants to do before we're adjourned here. I want to talk to you from this subject, when your step becomes a leap. When your step becomes a leap. I don't know what your custom is, but before you're seated, let's pray one more time and ask God to help us. Jesus, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for your great people, this great church, the words that have already gone forth. God, that have been spoken today, everyone that has chosen to be in your house, help me to deliver your word, God, effectively with anointing. Help me to Remove my agenda aside and let the Holy Ghost have its way and free flow in this service. Let us feel your love abundantly and your grace beyond measure. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Nineteen sixty one, President John Kennedy announced the initiative to go to the moon and to put a a man on the moon within the decade. From there, the Apollo program began. And over the next eight years or so, billions, hundreds of billions of dollars were spent. With that would come many setbacks, delays, problems that obviously they would have to figure out. Three lives were sadly lost in training for these missions. But on July the 20th, 1969, The Apollo 11 mission with two men inside, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, landed on the surface of the moon. And as Mr. Armstrong climbed out of that lunar module, he made a statement that would resonate. He spoke back to the command center in Houston, Texas, and he said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And as I've already said, that phrase became prophetic in a lot of ways. He would later say that phrase was not premeditated, but more spontaneous in nature. One small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. I get what he was saying. That yes, I am taking a literal step. Two and a half to three feet is the distance of a normal adult step. Yes, this is a step. But what this step 
symbolizes and what it's going to mean for all of us is bigger than we can measure. This is a step, but it's going to end up being a leap for all of us. Two thousand and twenty-four. You really still can't measure that step because we're still enjoying the ripple effects of that step. Our daily lives are affected by that step. You gentlemen like your cordless drills. I do. Mine's a Milwaukee. But if you like your DeWalt or whatever, Black and Decker, or you ladies like your cordless dirt devils or vacuum cleaners or cordless devices came from going to the moon. Breathing devices came from going to the moon. MRIs came from going to the moon. Retractable roofs in stadiums are a result of going to the moon. The soles on Nike Air tennis shoes, hallelujah, came from going to the moon. Solar panels are a result of going to the moon. The integrated circuit or the chip came from going to the moon. Filtration devices that led to dialysis came from going to the moon. The list is long, and I don't have time to go down the whole list, but I think you get the point. That it's a step. But what's going to come from this step is not going to be able to be measured. And you're not going to be able to put a price tag on it. Because it's going to be a ripple effect. It's not just going to affect me. All right. But it's going to affect everybody around me. All right. It's going to affect my children, my grandchildren, your children, your grandchildren, everybody that comes after us. This step is going to affect all of us here, now, and in the days to come. Amen. Steps are important. Anybody agree with that today? Steps are important. Um, my wife and I, when we're feeling up to the challenge and motivated, there is a little walking trail down the road from our home. And we like to go down there and, and walk around the trail. But before we get out and start, we have to make sure that we have something with us to prove that we took steps. <laughs> Gone are the days of just walking and having nothing to show for walking. I mean, when we get done, we want to be able to look at something, whether it's a tracker on our hip or a smartphone or an app or whatever or Fitbit or something with a uh, an Apple watch or device, we, we want something that when we get through, we want them fireworks going off and we want, we want something to say, you're doing good, amen. You took this many steps and we're like, man, if I could do that every day, that's gonna be, that's gonna be awesome. But steps are indicators of progress, amen. It's indicators of progress. Not only do they represent progress, but they also represent a process as well. You've bought furniture before and emptied the contents of that box out. And really you find out quick what you really bought is you bought a bunch of steps is what you bought. And you have to put the steps together and follow the steps before you can get the end result. Amen. Because it's a process. And as you go through the process, you are making progress. Amen. To get the result that you're looking for. That's why the devil hates it when we take steps in God and steps in the church and steps in the Holy Ghost. Because it tells God and it's 
sends a signal to the enemy that I am in a spiritual process and God is helping me to make progress and I am becoming what God wants me to become. Hallelujah. <laughs> Steps are not unfamiliar to the Bible. They are all through the scripture. Uh, when you, when the priest would go into the tabernacle to minister before God and for the people, he did not just go in on a whim and dressed any old way and walk in and think, well, I'm going to do it this way today. And, and I, just, I don't feel like doing that part. I'm going to do this part today, and I'm skipping that. It's not the way it was. There were steps involved when they went into the holy place, the holy of holies. There were steps involved because it's a process, and it helps us to make progress. Amen. Psalms chapter 120, these 15 chapters that go through Psalms 134 are labeled, we call them the song of ascent or the song of a degrees. Some even call them the song of steps. Amen. And they are referred to and they represent a little bit debatable, but in the grand scheme of things, it's kind of the same principle. The Jews would come up to Jerusalem to worship and as they went up, they would quote these 15 Psalms because it led them up as they quoted them. Others believed that they there were 15 steps that it led to the temple and as they took every step they would quote a chapter on each step and it led them up to the temple amen but here they are it first off and it starts uh, this first song of degree the chapter says in my distress I cried unto the Lord and he heard me amen but they didn't stop there they took another step and they went further and the next chapter says I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Then they would take another step and they would say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Are you where you need to be? No, I got a lot of imperfection, but I'm on my way and I'm headed somewhere and I'm in a process and I'm making progress. Then they would say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I didn't get this far by myself. The reason I'm this far along is because God is with me and God is helping me. Then they would take another step and they would say in the next chapter, except the Lord build the house, they that labor in vain that build it. It's God building my life. It is God putting me together. It is God changing my life. How many is glad God's at work in you and God is moving in you and God is putting things together in you. When they finally got to the top, they would finally say, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. They say these songs of degrees, these 15 chapters, are divided into three categories. It starts with trial, it goes to trust, and it ends in triumph. Amen. From trial to trust to triumph. And I don't know where you are in the process, but keep on going, dear brother, and keep on going dear sister because you're going to end up with triumph and you're going to end up after this the Bible said there was a feast to the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. The Bible said there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market of pool, which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of individuals that were blind and halt and withered and troubled and had maladies and diseases and sicknesses. And they're laying around this pool. It's not the Bible, but historical accounts refer to these pools or these porches rather and tell us these porches that were built around this pool were these five man-made porches. And 
I read where they were built with great architecture, skill, gifts, craftsmanship, talent. And they were built around this, this pool. And these porches that represented man's gifts, talents, craftsmanship, skill, the ornate porches. But if you're still on the porch, even at man's best, you're still going to come to a dead end sometimes. Because the best that man can offer still, there's an end to that. But when you come to the end of what man can do, that doesn't mean it's over. As somebody said, when you come to the end of your road, you've just pulled up in God's driveway. Because there are no dead ends with God. How many know there's no dead ends with God? Hallelujah. Well, I'm sitting here on the porch, and this is the best that man can do, and he's telling me he's done all he can do, and I've come to the end, but there is still a pool, amen, that you can step into. There is still a supernatural place with God that man can't venture into on his own, but there's a place that God can do the miraculous and signs and wonders and miracles still happen. Hallelujah. How many believe that God is still a God that can able to do the miraculous and he can do what nobody else can do and he can do what nobody else can explain? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few years ago, several years ago now, I guess time gets by, doctor, my wife had health issues and doctor, she had been to specialist all, all over and done all kind of tests. And finally, we just come to the end of the porch. And the doctor, the guy's supposed to know what to do. He looked at her and said, I'm sorry. You're stuck with this. That's what he said. That's encouraging. Build your faith, you know. He said, you're stuck what he told her but we knew you may think we're stuck with this but we're not going to be stuck with this and my time's limited here today but I want you to know that we prayed and there was a there was a defining night in prayer that God turned that situation for my wife and she is healed and completely whole today because even though you come to the port, there's still a pool, hallelujah. There is still a pool where God can change it and God can turn it around and God can fix it and God can make it right. Can I just pause here today and say, I don't care if the devil is digging your grave. You need to tell the devil, there's still a pool. There's still a pool. There's still a pool. God's not finished. It's not done. It's not over. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord here today. Anybody still believe that if God's involved, there's always a chance. If God involved, there's always possibility. The Bible said to all that are joined to the living, there is hope. There is hope. If God involved, it can happen. He can do it. He can turn it. He can change it. He can fix it. Hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. I, uh, I'm off the cuff here, so pardon me. I, uh, this book I just got done with. I won't tell you the whole story because good communicators say never tell the whole story. So, <laughs> Plus, we don't have time for the whole story. But there was this 
shipwreck on this island in the 1800s. This, nobody knew where these people were. and uh, The captain of the ship, it was in the middle of winter, and all their provisions was gone. True story. And he was already sick. And then as they were marooned on this deserted island, there's six or eight of them. And the captain was sick unto death. And the second day there, his crew looked at him and they decided he's not going to make it. So they went back to the, the old wrecked schooner. And they found a shovel. I mean, the man's still breathing. And they went over there beside him and started digging his grave with him still alive because they thought there's no way he can survive this. But he survived it. And they had to fill the grave in. And he was rescued off of that island. And he lived for a long time later. And I just, I said that because I want to tell somebody here today, if the devil's got your spade and he's digging your grave and trying to tell you, you're never going to get out of this. You're never going to get beyond this. You need to tell the devil, you're not digging my grave. That's not going to be my grave. It's not going to be this. Somebody help me now. I'm not going to end here. This is not where it's over. You're not going to write my epitaph. Come on, God's going to intervene. There is still a pool. There is still a place. There is still a supernatural touch of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. So here they are. Here they are. And, and the Bible said here, in this pool, the Bible said that an angel would come. And trouble the water. And the scripture says, whosoever. Everybody say whosoever. Now, when I think about that word whosoever, it's a pretty big word. It includes a lot of people. When you think about it. Matter of fact, when you think about it, I've never met a non-whosoever. Everybody I've met up to this point has been a whosoever. Everybody in this congregation here today, I mean, I'm looking around, I'm checking out the balcony, but best I can tell, everybody here falls under the umbrella of a whosoever. I get it. There's some older whosoever's here. There's some younger ones. There's some guys and gals and, you know, different, different whosoever's. But we're still a bunch of, still a bunch of whosoever's. It's all we are is a whosoever. And Jesus, when he started talking about having access to him and the things of God, he would use big words like that. He never used words that let anybody feel like they were excluded or compartmentalized. He would use words like this, whosoever. That lets us all know that I'm included in that number. And here today, if you're a whosoever, then you've got access to the supernatural, to the hand of God, to the pool, because we are whosoevers. Somebody shout amen. So it don't matter who you are, what your name is, who your mama was, who your daddy was, who your grandpa was, who your uncle was, what your lineage is, where you came from. You're a whosoever and you're a candidate and you've got access and you can make a step and you can get closer to God because you are a whosoever. The Bible said whosoever then first. After the troubling the water stepped in was made whole of of what? Somebody said it. Whatsoever. What now? 
Brother Romine, you got that? Yep. Read that verse to me right there. Whosoever then first. Whosoever yeah. then first after the troubling of the water. Stepped in and was made whole of whatsoever. Disease. At whatsoever. At whatsoever. You mean all I got to be <laughs> is a whosoever. Yeah. And all I got to have a is a whatsoever. <laughs> and that makes me a candidate. You mean there ain't no catch to this? There ain't no certain thing that I got to measure up to? I feel the Holy Ghost here now. And if you're here today and say, I got my whosoever. And I got a whatsoever. You know what I'd do? I'd get your whosoever. And I'd get my whatsoever. And I'd say, God, I'm going to step into that pool. Because I need to leave different than the way that I came. I need to leave different than the way I come to this house. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you got a whatsoever, I'd say devil, God didn't exclude me. He wants to help me. He wants to touch me. He wants to work in my life. And if all I got to do is take a step, I'm going to take a step. And I'm going to let God turn that step into a leap in my life. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord today. Come on, everybody do it one more time. Thank you, Jesus. God's waiting on you, brother. God's waiting on you, sister. All I got to do is take a step. If you're a whosoever, you got a whatsoever. The Bible said, and they stepped in. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you got. All I'm requiring, all I need from you is a step. It's all I need you to do. I don't need you to have all the answers. I don't need you to figure it out. I don't need you to have your world together. I don't need you to have your ducks in a row. I'll do the turning into the leap part if you'll take the step. If you'll do the little thing, I'll make it bigger than you can ever imagine. I'll turn it into something you'll never be able to measure. I'll turn it into something that'll affect your life, that'll affect your family. It's going to affect your kids. It's going to affect your future. But all I'm asking, if you can just take a step, I'm not asking much. Just give me a step, and I'll turn that step into a leap in your life. Am I making sense so far today? I hope I am. There are people here today. Your future is waiting on you to take a step. There are people here today. The reason you're here is because somebody somewhere in your past took a step and you're here because of the ripple effects of that step you can't measure it you can't put a price tag on it God said don't worry about the leap I'll take care of the leap you give me the step and I'll turn that step into a leap that's why the devil doesn't want anybody asking God to forgive them of their sins. Because it's a step. And we don't overlook that step. Because it's an essential, important step. And the devil will say, ah, you don't need to do that. You're not there yet. You ain't got it together. You got some stuff to work on. But God's saying, don't worry about the leap. You don't need, you, you, if you focus on the leap, you're going to live a frustrated life. You got to focus on the step. And you take the step and leave the leaping part up to me. I'll turn it into something miraculous. I'll turn it into something great. You just give me the step. Hallelujah. 
That's why everybody's got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of our sins. For the removing, the washing away of our sins. When you ask God to forgive you your sins, he forgives you. But that doesn't remove your sin. The only thing that can remove your sin is when you are baptized baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission or the washing away of the removing of your how does that happen I don't understand that just take the step and leave the leap up to God and just take the step and if you're here today and you know that you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus or you never have and the devil's trying to make you hesitate and to halt and to and to linger you need to let the devil know if I keep on waiting to take the leap I'm never going to do it. I've got to look at it as a step and let God take care of the leap. Hallelujah. Everybody needs a baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't know about that preacher. I don't know if I'm quite there yet. You, none of us have never quite there yet when we get the Holy Ghost. We just take the step. And let God fill us with the Holy Ghost just like we are. And then God takes that step and he says, watch what I do with this. I'm going to get the ball rolling with this. And things are going to start happening in your life from this step uh, that you could never imagine. Uh, you could never have thought about. Uh, but since you took the step, I am going to turn it into a leap in your life. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be much longer here. I got, um, Pastor knows, some of you may remember, but we got two boys. They're older now. They're both in college. If you run out of stuff to pray for, <laughs> and you're just trying to think, Lord, I've, I've exhausted all of my needs. And I don't know what to pray for. Put, put the Cheryl family down there. But anyway, I remember when, when they were little kids in diapers. And I'm going to get a little crude here, but just don't lose confidence in the preacher here. But I remember when they were little kids. One would crawl, and Seth, my youngest, he never really crawled. He just scooted everywhere and rolled like they do to get to where he wanted to go. But I, I remember... When they were young babies and they're in diapers and, you know, they, both of my kids looked like the Michelin man. They were just so chubby and pudgy. But as a parent, naturally, you look forward to that day. When you realize, okay, they're, I can't remember exactly what date, but I don't know, was it 9, 10, 11 months, somewhere in there? All of a sudden, they, they've been crawling. But one day, they grab the back of a chair. And they pull up. And they look around like, I just conquered the world. All they did was pull up. And then they get the courage to let go. And that balance in that starts. And they fall back down. But God puts something in them. It's a natural thing from God. They said, man, I fell down. But that standing up business, that felt right. And I'm going to do that again. And they pull up again. And they fall down again. They said, that, yeah, that. That's what I'm supposed to be doing right there. And they stand back up again. When they get to that point, as parents, I mean, these kids are a wreck. They're so far from having it together, it ain't funny. They got so much to learn. Their lives are out of control. They're a mess. Literally speaking, they're a mess. 
I mean, they're pulling up, acting like they conquered the world, and their lives are a wreck. Toys strewn across the floor. Baby food smeared all over their face. Their diapers are dragging the ground. But still in that condition, you as a parent and me as a parent, we don't, we don't go to them when they stand up. I don't want to mess with anybody too bad here, but I'm going to mess with you just a little bit. What's your name? Timmy. Timmy, stand up, Timmy. You're going to be my little pookie here for just a second. <laughs> brother, brother Timmy, you're going to be the little baby here. And uh, my little pookie, I'm so sorry. So he's standing up, and he, he's a, he's a, he's a wreck. He's got baby food all over his face, and he's a mess. And but he's to that point, and he's and he's he looks like he's about ready to take a step. But man, he's a wreck, and he's got so far to go and so much to learn, and his life's a mess. We don't go to little Timmy and say, Little Timmy, I don't know what you're thinking, pal, but you are in no shape to start taking steps right now. You are not there, pal. So I love you to death, but you know, your diaper has got issues and your, your baby food's everywhere and your room and your crib and toys are everywhere. I mean, your life is a wreck. And, you telling me you're ready to take a step? Don't think so, pal. You're not there yet. You got a lot to do before you can take a step. You got to get some stuff cleaned up. You got to work some stuff out. You got to fix some stuff, put stuff together. You don't do that. But little Timmy there, he's got all this stuff going on in his life. And you'll get his favorite little dinosaur or little car keys. And you'll get out from him and say, come on, Pookie. You can do it. Come to daddy. Yeah, come on. You can do it. He's got a lot of stuff happening there. But you know this is what he needs to do right now. He needs to take a step. He needs to take a step. Because I know if you don't ever take that step, this stuff ain't ever going to get cleaned up. You're never going to learn anything. Doors are never going to be open. But if you take a step, it's going to open doors. That step is going to turn in to a leap in your life. What I'm saying today is don't let the devil tell you. You got to wait till you can take a leap. You got to take a step. You got to take a step and let God turn it into a leap. Let's lift our hands up to Jesus together. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me here this, this afternoon? Brother Timmy. I know we're still play acting here, but look, Timmy, I know you got a lot going on there, pal. But I've nurtured you, I have fed you, I've watched over you, I have taken care of you. I've got a lot of investment in you to get you to this point. And now I'm to this point saying, come on. It's time. It's time to take a step. And there's some individuals here the Holy Ghost is saying, you ain't got here by yourself. 
The Holy Ghost has nurtured you. The Spirit of God has protected you. The Spirit of God has watched over you. It's been there for you. It's got a lot of investment in you. And now the Holy Ghost is here on this Sunday saying, it's time. It's time for you to take a step. And if you live the rest of your life waiting until you can take a leap, you'll never get there because you can't take the leap. I didn't require you to take the leap. I didn't make it of you to take a leap. I knew you could never take the leap by yourself. But all I'm requiring of you is a step. Because I know that's something you can give me right where you are. Right where you stand. Right there in the proximity of your life. You can give me a step. And I'll take that step and I'll turn that step into a leap. Jesus, I thank you for your presence here today. Jesus, your love is overwhelming and your mercy is beyond measure and your grace is sufficient for all of us here. God, the price of salvation is affordable to everybody. You didn't require it of anybody, something we couldn't pay or something we couldn't do. God, you said all you got to do is take a step. And if you take a step, I'll turn that step into a leap. David said, Lord, you have enlarged my steps I didn't do it I'm just taking my normal step but you have put your hand on what I'm doing and you made it bigger than what I could ever do you made it greater than what I could ever do you have taken my step and you have enlarged it and you've magnified it and you've turned it into a leap I just took a step, Lord. But when you got done with it, it affected here. It affected my future. It affected eternity. It affected all the days to come. Lord, you enlarged this step that I'm taking. God, you magnified this step. You turned this step into a leap. Hallelujah. That's what he'll do. He'll do it for every student. He'll do it for every mom, every dad, every adult, every individual in this house. If you'll give him a step, he'll turn that step into a leap in your life. Hallelujah. We're going to come to this front here in just a moment. And we have a cliche that says the altars are open, but as we all know, they're never closed. But we just, that's just signifying that we've come to a certain portion of a service. And that's where we are now. And if you're here today and you feel like, okay, God, I ain't saying I got it all together. I ain't saying I've reached my place that I want to get to. But yeah, hey, if you're telling me that I'm a whosoever and I got a whatsoever, and right here, right now, in this condition, I can take a step right now. And if all I got to do is take a step, God, you've left me with the easy part because I'll do that. I can, if you can give me all that stuff based on a step, I can give you a step. I can do that. Now, now if you require me to have it all together and have all the answers, I don't know if I can take that leap. But if all you're asking for is a step, I'd be crazy to walk out of here and say, I can't do it because you can do it. God made it easy for everybody here. All he wants is a step. It don't matter who you are, where you come from, all your struggles, your fights, your chaos, or what's going on in your life. Right where you are, God said, take a step right there. Take a step right there, and I'll turn that step into a leap in your life. 
before we come, I want us to pray together. I want to invite you to come to this altar with us. Don't let the devil throw a bunch of junk in your path of all this and that and what about this and what about that. And don't, don't, don't let him try to make you think you've got to take the leap because you don't have to take the leap. All you got to do is take the step. Jesus, your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which you please. And it will prosper in the thing whereto you sent it. And I'm praying that your word today would take hold. Take hold of somebody's heart. Take hold of somebody's life. Take hold of somebody's spirit. God, and right where we are today, help us to have the courage and help us to have the faith and the confidence in Christ and the confidence in the blood of Jesus and the confidence in the empty tomb. Hallelujah. To say, God, if all you need from me is a step, God, I'm here today to say I can give it to you. And I'm going to let you turn it into something great. But I'm going to give you something to work with. I'm going to give you something to take and to do something great with. I'm going to give you a step today, God. And I'm going to let you turn that into something great in my life. Turn it into a leap, oh God. As they begin to play and sing something here. If you're here, if you're here today and you think... God, I think you're talking to me. I feel like you're dealing with me today, God. I, I feel like I want to respond, uh, hallelujah, to the Spirit, to the Word of God, to the draw of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm talking to you today, and I'm inviting you to slip out of your seat and come and join us at this altar. There will be people here that will meet you here, that will put their arms around you and pray with you and let you know how much they care and love on you and pray with you. Come on. Come give God a step, brother. Come give God a step, sister. Come give God a step, sir. Give God a step, ma'am. Come on, the Holy Ghost is saying, come on, sir. Come on, ma'am, right where you are. Right where you are. Give me a step. Give me a step. And I'll turn it to a leap. I will turn it into a leap. Come on, if you're a whosoever, if you're a whosoever, bring your need down to this altar. If you got any need, bring your need to this altar. Bring your whatsoever to this altar. Step off the porch. Step into the pool. Hallelujah. Bring your sickness, bring your disease, bring your issue. Give God a step. Give God something to work with. Bring your family crisis. Bring your marital crisis. Bring the problems with your children. Give God a step.